Hey guys, I'm happy that you are here. My name is Pet Choi and I am your plantito from Mindanao. Tara at samahan niyo ako sa aking plant journey. To those who are new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe and pakiclick na rin ang bell notification para updated kayo sa mga latest videos ng Bechoy Vlog. And before anything else, to each and every one, especially to our subscribers and our viewers, I would like to greet each and every one of you a Happy New Year and welcome to 2021. And I hope na i-bless pa rin tayo ni Lord and be given with good health. For our very first vlog for the year 2021, ay if you feature natin ang aking favorite na plan for the year 2020, which is our Philodendron Pink Princess. I will be sharing to you guys how I care for my Philodendron Pink Princess and i share ka rin yung mga tricks on how we can achieve the pink variegations on its leaves na trademark talaga ng Philodendron na ito. And later on then guys, we will be propagating two of my mother plant na mga pink princess at ito yung part na gustong gusto ko talaga dahil madadagdagan na naman ng aking pink princess sa aking collections. Ang Philodendron irubicens or popularly known as pink princess ay isang trailing type of a philodendron just like ng ating mga green emerald, mayoy, and burly marks. So you really need a pole to support the growth of this plant especially kung humahaba na siya. And the pink princess is popularly known because of its very striking na mga pink variegation sa kanyang leaves. So that is why marami din mga collectors ang gustong gusto talaga maka-own ng isang pink princess. But its beauty also comes with the price kasi medyo Medyo pricey na rin talaga yung mga pink princess ngayon. And one thing din na na-observe ko is that yung price, nakabase din siya sa size ng plant and of course, the amount of pink variegation sa kanyang mga leaves. Personally guys, I really have a thing for plants na may mga variegations. At ang nagustuhan ka rin sa pink princess guys is that it really has so many surprises and each leaf is very unique talaga. There are times guys na yung mga pink princess natin, nagbibigay lang siya ng mga pink splashes sa kanyang mga leaves. Minsan naman, may mga nagbibigay ng half moon, kagaya ng nandito. At kung suswertehan ka naman, meron ding mga full pink na variegation sa kanyang leaves. And for me, I think that's the best thing of having a pink princess in your collection. At sobrang dali lang nilang alagaan at paramihin. And there are actually various factors affecting the pink variegations of our pink princess. And this may include yung lighting, of course, that's really important. Second would be the humidity. Third would be the soil mix being used. And fourth, of course, the nutrients that it gets. So these factors should come together para ma-achieve natin yung full potential ng ating pink princess. So for the care tips that I share ko sa inyo guys, i-divide natin ito into four parts. First would be the lighting requirement. Second would be the watering, third will be the soil mix being used, and fourth will be the fertilizer that I am using for my pink princess. And a disclaimer lang natin guys, itong mga care tips na isi-share ko sa inyo is based on my personal experience in taking care of my pink princess na mga plants. And let's start first with our lighting requirement. Yung lighting talaga, it plays a vital role talaga para sa variegation sa ating mga plants. So dapat i-take note natin ito guys. So, ano nga ba yung variegations? Ito yung area sa leaves ng ating plant kung saan nag-iiba yung kulay. Sa ibang plants, merong mga white, may mga yellow na mga variegations. And for the pink princess naman, it's the trademark pink color yung variegation niya. And a little bit of trivia lang guys, yung area na may variegations, it's actually an area na walang chlorophyll. So that is why iba yung color niya and it's not green. And ano din ba yung chlorophyll natin? Ito yung nagsisynthesize ng food ng plant after getting an energy from the sun. So for those who wish na magkaroon ng pink variegations ang lahat ng leaves ng inyong mga pink princess, be very careful with that. Because kung full pink yung mga leaves ng ating, uh, ng ating pink princess, that would mean na wala siyang chlorophyll and then mahihirapan siya mag-synthesize ng food. So in return, mahirapan din yung growth ng ating plant. And example lang natin guys, you have here a pink princess na may isang leaf na may full pink variegations. The good thing about this lang is that yung mga naunang mga dahon niya is majority color green. So that would mean na kahit na may isang leaf ka lang dito na naka full pink variegations, it can still sustain the growth of this plant. And just like all the other philodendrons, ang pink princess guys, they prefer to be in an area na bright and indirect sunlight. And for my pink princess naman guys, I place them in an area na may access to direct morning sunlight 
but only up to 8 a.m. And 8 a.m. onwards, guys, shaded area na siya, but then bright pa rin siya all throughout the day. So, make sure lang natin, guys, na until 8 a.m. lang yung exposure niya sa direct morning sunlight. And not and you should not go beyond 8 a.m. na kasi makakakos na ito ng sunburn sa ating mga leaves, especially sa mga new leaves at yung mga leaves na may mga pink variegation. I-share ko lang din guys yung isang experience ko with one of my pink princess. Meron kasi ako isang pink princess na medyo mahina yung kanyang mga pink variegations. Wala masyadong lumalabas ng mga pink variegations. So what I did was that in-expose ko ito sa direct morning sunlight up until 9am and meron talagang masamang nangyari. Unfortunately, yung mga lumang mga leaves niya, okay lang din naman sila. But what happened was that yung mag a unfurl pa lang na leaf, yun yung na sunburn. So, lesson learned talaga yun sa akin guys, na dapat hindi talaga paabuti ng mga 9am yung exposure ng ating mga pink princess na plant. Kasi detrimental na yun, especially sa mga pausbong pa lang ng mga dahon. Guys, iwasan din naman nating ilagay yung ating mga pink princess na mga plants sa area na may low light. Kung ayaw naman natin mag-revert or mag-full green yung kulay ng mga variegated plants natin. At kung nasa indoor naman natin na ilagay yung ating pink princess guys, just make sure na may access pa rin sila sa bright na area. So that's why dapat ilagay natin sila malapit sa bintana. And of course, importante rin na i-rotate siya from time to time. Pwede naman gumamit ng mga grow lights guys para naman ma-supplement natin yung lighting requirement ng ating mga plants na nasa indoor. But I would still recommend na siguro once or twice a week ilabas natin yung ating mga pink princess para makakuha sila or ma-expose sila sa natural morning sunlight. Malalaman naman natin guys kung kulang yung lighting na natatanggap na ating mga pink princess na mga plants if present ang mga signs na ito. Una is mahina yung pag-produce ng kanyang mga bagong leaves o medyo mahina na rin yung kanyang growth. Number two is maliliit yung kanyang mga bagong leaves na naipo-produce. Minsan din nagiging wrinkled or yung medyo kulubot-kulubot yung mga bagong dahon. At pangatlo naman is yung pink splashes or yung kanyang mga pink variegation sa kanyang mga bagong dahon ay kukonti na lang or sadyang parang mawawala na. So that would mean na full green na yung mga bagong dahon and that means na nagre-revert ng ating plant ngayon. And to sum things up for our lighting requirement, I highly recommend na talagang i-expose natin sila ang ating mga pink princess sa direct morning sunlight up until 8 a.m. And 8 a.m. onwards, dapat bright and shaded area na siya. So, let's now go to our watering tips for our pink princess na mga plants. Wala akong specific na frequency in watering my pink princess na mga plants. There are times na once a week, there are times once in every 5 days, and it would still actually depend on the condition of our soil. So, I just make sure na yung first 1 inch ng ating topsoil is dry na talaga. And how do I do it? I do the finger test. So, paano ko ba ginagawa yung finger test? I just stick my finger sa topsoil ng ating plant and then if you feel ko lang kung medyo may moisture pa siya or dry na, then doon ko na malalaman yung kanyang soil condition. Pero, kung medyo matagal ka na naghahalaman, sa isang tingin pa lang, just by one look sa ating topsoil ng ating plant, malalaman mo na kung nagda-dry na ba yung soil natin. So when I water my pink princess na mga plants guys, I make sure na nakukuha talaga nila yung right amount of water for their needs. And so I do full watering on my pink princess na plant. How do I do full watering? I just simply pour water sa topsoil and then evenly yung pag-distribute niya. And until such time na makita ko na nag-drain na yung water sa kanyang pothole dun sa baba, then I stop. And a little bit of trick lang guys na isi-share ko sa inyo, I have a container na ginagamit ko pang collect ng rainwater at itong rainwater naman is ito yung ginagamit ko pang dilig sa aking mga pink princess na mga plants. At kung hindi naman available yung rainwater, we can still use tap water. And just like any other mga philodendrons guys, yung pink princess, they love to be in an area na may moisture talaga. So it's really important na hindi naka-totally dry out yung ating soil in between watering them. And make sure din also na dapat hindi natin sila i-overwater kasi sensitive din sila sa overwatering. May mga signs naman para malaman natin kung nag-overwater tayo sa ating mga pink princess na plants. They can either be na droopy ng kanyang mga leaves or nagsistart ng mag-brown yung kanyang mga tips ng mga leaves. It's also very important to take note na kung pipili tayo ng mga pots guys for our pink princess, it should be the right size based on the root system and not on the size of the leaves of our plants. 
Kasi kapag masyadong malaki naman yung pot natin para sa kanyang root system, there is a chance talaga na mag-root ang ating plant kasi matagal mag-dry out ang soil. At kung masyado namang maliit yung ating pot para sa ating root system, mas magiging maliit yung space for the growth of the roots and in turn, magiging mahina din yung growth ng ating plant. And it's also very important guys to take note na dapat yung pot na pipiliin, pipiliin natin is dapat may mga holes talaga para makasupport sa drainage ng water. Also, yung ating mga pink princess na mga plants guys, they love to be in an area na may high in humidity. So it's it's really advisable na i-group natin sila together with together with other plants and for me naman I do misting at least twice a day para naman mapa-increase natin yung humidity. I am just very fortunate guys kasi yung area naman dito, we are surrounded by trees, napakaraming trees dito. So yun, isa din yung factor na kakatulong din na makapag-increase ng humidity dito. So I'm really blessed with that. And that's it for our watering tips. And now let's proceed to the soil mix being used and the fertilizer. A good soil mix plays a very important role talaga guys para sa growth ng ating plants. So it's very important na gumamit tayo ng right soil mix for our pink princess. And the soil mix that I'm using for my pink princess guys, it's chunky, it's aerated, it's well draining but can still hold moisture and of course rich in nutrients and minerals. So in short guys, yung soil mix natin para sa ating pink princess is medyo buhaghag siya and it's not compact. At ito yung mga iba't ibang components na aking soil mix guys. Number one would be 25% of pumice or small stones or perlites. At ito yung magpo-promote ng water drainage for the plants. Another 25% of cocoa cubes or dried tree barks. At ito naman din yung magpo-promote ng aeration and at the same time drainage din ng water. Another 25% of cocoa peat. And ito naman cocoa peat, ito na yung mag-hold ng moisture para sa ating plant. 10% of carbonized rice hull. At ito naman yung magiging soil conditioner natin. And the remaining 15% will be our vermicast or your worm casting. And this will supply the needed nutrients for our plants. And if ever, kung hindi naman available yung vermicast, we can use animal's manure like yung sa cow or sa goat. And as I have mentioned earlier, I use vermicast para sa ating fertilizer and then nagtatop up lang ako ng vermicast once a month at saka handful lang sa topsoil ko lang nilalagay. Yung mga philodendrons kasi, just like other mga plants, they thrive better sa medium na rich in organic materials. I-take note lang din natin guys na yung frequency naman ng pagtatop up natin ng fertilizer would still depend on the growth of our plant. Kung medyo nakikita natin na mahina na yung growth niya, mahina na rin yung paglabas sa mga bagong dahon or wala masyadong mga pink variegations, then we can top up na ng fertilizer. And i-take note lang natin guys, yung paglalagay ng fertilizer is only used to enhance or supplement the growth of our plants. And it's not a remedy sa mga existing na problems ng ating plants like kung na-overwater sila or nasa sunburn. Dahil hindi naman talaga remedy yung fertilizer sa mga conditions na na-mention ko earlier. So that's it for our care tips guys and now we can proceed to our propagation. So sa ngayon guys, dalawang mother plants yung ipopropagate natin ngayon. Ito yung uunahin natin kasi na-observe ko lang itong pink princess na ito. Hindi na siya masyadong nakakaproduce ng mga pink variegations. And pwede na siya ma-propagate kasi may mga aerial roots na siya. At ito namang isang plant natin, yung nandito, talagang very suitable na ito for propagation kasi... Napakarami na niyang aerial roots guys and also para makapagproduce din tayo ng bagong plant. So here is a closer look of one of our pink princess guys na ipopropagate natin. Ito yung may full pink na variegations and meron na rin siyang bagong leaf na pausbong guys. And ito let's have a closer look on the node at, at makikita natin dito na may napakarami na siyang mga aerial roots. And focus lang natin. Dito sa, na, sa part na ito, dito ko siya plan i-cut. Yan, dito. So may matitirang tatlong dahon para naman makasustain pa rin yung mother plant natin na kapag produce pa rin siya ng mga babies in the future. So umpisa na natin yung pagpropagate. I am currently using a knife instead of scissors kasi pag knife kasi I have a full control kung paano or kung saan siya nga part gusto kong i-cut. And prior to this guys, itong knife na gagamitin natin is na dis disinfect ko na ito using an alcohol. So ito na guys, ikakat na natin. Ayan, 
puntahan lang yun ito yung napagkata natin At ito namang opening natin guys, pabayaan natin ito na mag-dry out. Yung iba naman, alam ko gumagamit sila ng detain para mas mapabilis natin yung, yung pag-dry out ng opening. And in my case naman guys, we'll just leave it ganito lang, natural lang na ipadry out natin yung kanyang sugat. At isang reason din guys kung bakit nagpupagay tayo ng mga mother plants is para makapag-produce ng panibagong baby yung ating pink princess. Kasi unless na talagang mag-cut kayo, uh, hahaba at hahaba lang yung plant natin at hindi siya magpo-produce ng saha. So, we can expect na somewhere here siguro may tutubo na na panibagong pink princess. At ito naman guys, ang closer look ng ating pangalawang pink princess na ipopropagate. Napakalaki na niya actually. Napakalaki na ng mga leaves niya. And if you can observe it here, Kukonti lang din yung mga pink variegations niya. Pero I think itong panibagong dahon na pausbong pa lang is meron siyang malaking mga pink variegations. And I really find this mother plant na pink princess na suitable talaga gawing mother plant at ipropagate kasi napakataba ng kanyang stem at saka mahaba din yung kanyang mga nodes and marami na rin siyang mga aerial roots. At ito guys, a closer look of our stem. Uh, sa part na ito, sa ilalim ng node na ito, dito tayo magkakat in between the node and itong leaf na to. So ito na guys, umpisa na natin ikat itong pangalawang mother plant. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, dapat sa ilalim lang ng node niya para makuha natin yung root system na nakakabit doon sa node. Here's our new plant, and here's our mother plant. At ito na guys, yung ating dalawang bagong pink princess na plants. And the next step that we will be doing is iriripat lang natin ito using the soil mix na na-i-mention ko earlier. And I'm really happy na meron na tayong panibagong dalawang pink princess na plants. A reminder lang din guys, kapag naripat na natin ang ating mga pink princess, is ilagay lang natin sila sa area na bright and shaded. And wala munang direct exposure sa morning sunlight at this point. And later on guys, i-update ko na lang kayo kung may mga developments na yung ating mga mother plants kung nakapag-produce na sila ng mga panibagong babies. So that's it guys. I hope na nag-enjoy kayo and at the same time may na-learn kayo sa ating mga care tips na nai-share and from our propagation video. And before we end this video, let's do some shoutouts first. Shoutout kay Sir Ray Amores. Hi kay Ma'am Mary Jane Bragat. Hi then kay Jade Barreto. Hello then kay Marvin Paul. Hi kay Ma'am Catherine Malaki. Hi then kay Sir Gerson Celis. Hello kay Sir Ermi Amuguis. Hi then kay Sir Chunilo Salvan. Hi kay Sir Gilberto Gusela. Hello then kay Sir Richard Francisco. Hi kay Ma'am Liza Ibarra. And hello kay Sir Elmer De La Cruz. Please follow me on my social media accounts on Facebook, that's Betchoy Vlog. And on Instagram, that's Betchoy underscore vlog. And let's talk about plants. And if ever meron kayo mga questions, mga inquiries about plant cares, or some plants na gusto nyong ipa-ID, please send me a message or a DM sa ating IG and FB and I will try my very best na ma-answer natin yung mga questions ninyo. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and pakiclick na rin ang bell notification para updated kayo sa mga latest videos ng Betchoy Vlog. Once again, this is Betchoy, your plantito from Mindanao. Happy planting!